So hello and welcome to the show, Dr. John Cooper Clark. How are you doing today, mate? Hi, yeah, not bad. Yeah, good. We're getting ready for a new tour. Um, who decides where you perform up and down the country? Uh, I got an office uh, uh, that sorts all that out. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's not the first day of a tour. I mean, it never really finishes. Actually, just uh, I take I, t- I take cr- uh, Chris Christmas and August off. Yes. The rest of the time, I'm sort of working all the time, so I'm kind of always on tour, really. <laughs> I suppose August, if you go away, you've got to be careful you don't get a tan, because that would go against your image. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Sounds like kiss a death to a man in my profession, traditionally, <laughs> yeah. Um, you're playing the Victoria Hall in Stoke. Yeah. You usually play up at the New Vic in, in Newcastle, which has been a great venue for you. Many sold-out gigs, but have you played at the Victoria Hall before? Oh, yeah, many times, actually, over the years, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 in fact, one of us. I remember playing it with uh, with Buzzcox back in the days of the late Pete Shelley. Wow! In the uh, in the seventies, yeah. I'd, I'd never heard of either Hanley or the Victoria Hall before that. <laughs> but it's nice. It's nice to see that venue still uh, still open and running after yeah. all these years. Yeah, it still gets some good bands, and yeah, uh, but, yeah it's got cool. a rich history of who's been playing there, which is good. Yeah, I bet it has. Yeah. Do you do requests when you're on stage still? Or of course I, mean, I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. we've all got our favourite uh, poems. It depends yours. on the request. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the request is, yeah, yeah. If it's for a poem that they particularly like, then sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we've all got favours. It must be difficult to decide what you've got to do on the night. Well, it's quite easy on this on this uh, outing, uh, actually, because I've got a new book of poetry out yeah. called The Luckiest Guy Alive. So I'm, I'm mainly I'm reading from that, you know, uh, kind of samples of stuff from that book. So uh, plus the odd, uh, you know, as you say, the odd favourite. Last time we spoke was when you were promoting the album with you, Cornwell. That's right. Yeah, um, yeah. Do you, do you have any more collaborations in the pipeline? Because I know you've done quite a few. Is there anything else that you'd like no. to do? No. No, <laughs> not really. No, no. I mean, even that, you know, it's, it's something like, I, you know, I, I'm glad I have the opportunity to do that, you know, because I love singing. Mm. And, uh, and I really like those tracks that uh, she had uh, picked out. So, uh, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad we did that. It was uh, real uh, education for me. You've also worked with Alex Turner. I think everyone's a fan of your work who works in music. So well, uh, I reckon I they're queuing so. up. That'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> you got known as a punk poet, and uh, that's not fair because your musical taste buds are tantalised in many ways. Well, that's right. They were, I mean, my musical uh, my musical tastes were formed uh, a long time before the out the outbreak of punk rock in 1976. You know, in fact, I was kind of you know uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, 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 my my musical taste was formed even before Elvis. Yeah. You know, so I was a big fan of, you know, the the great American songbook, really. Yeah. You know, Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Dean Martin, you know, those sort of songs that they would sing. You know, mainly American. I would say American popular music was, if you had to sum up my taste in music. Yeah. You know, in uh, in, in one category, I would say American popular music from uh, the 1920s to the present day. Yeah, I'm going to say, what about today's music? Does any of that hold up for you? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. I like the Arctic Monkeys for obvious reasons. Uh, actually, not for obvious reasons. I think, <laughs> I think they're great, whether they like me or not. I, I mean, fabulous man. Uh, I, I like, you know, I like uh, plenty of people uh, who's around now that don't really have a... You know, I'm, I, I, I tend to go for melody and yeah. musical instruments. I'm not too uh, fussed about, uh, you know, anything that happened in the, uh, you know, uh, techno or <laughs> or a, any of those things that I don't know the difference between one or the other of. I don't want to age myself no, here, but, no. but I am a slave to melody and uh, lyrics. Yes. I'm, I'm a slave for rock and roll full stop. I think. Yeah, yeah, I love rock and roll. Yeah. Elvis is my guy. Yeah. Elvis. Of course, yeah. I went to watch uh, Pete Doherty in his new uh, band. Oh, great. Night. Yeah, no, no, there you are. Fantastic, mm-hmm. fantastic. Yeah. I'll tell you else is out as well, speaking of junkie rockers, which he probably, which he isn't anymore. Uh, <laughs> uh, Pete, Peter Perry. Yes, Pete Perry, yeah. He's, he's, he's doing a few a few gigs, a uh, few select gigs at the moment, and uh, I can't recommend this, him enough. I was, yeah. I, I was a massive fan of The Only Ones. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've seen that. And I, I, th- I think Peter produced a lot, uh, or I think Peter worked with the uh, Libertines quite early in their career, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. 
I know you write things down quite a lot and you're forever writing now, but um, is it true that you still don't have a computer or a phone, a mobile? No, I don't have any of those things. Mm -hmm. I've got a phone in my house. Yeah. (laughs) Just not one that I have to carry around with. (laughs) So we're talking right now on two tin cans and a string. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But I think it's because you said that you'll never get out of the house if you got engrossed into YouTube and things like that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, there's too much available uh, on on those uh, on that media for me to get involved with, you know. And I already know too much. I, I wish I didn't know as much as I did. <laughs> 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 That's a great answer. I yeah. wish I could. I wish I could ignor, ignoramusify myself yeah. if there's such a word. Yeah. Could do it offloading some of the useless knowledge I already <laughs> contain. <laughs> I think I take in one bit of knowledge and then I lose one. I think that's where I've moved to. <laughs> but the problem with the internet is you can't argue with people who've got it in the pocket. So uh, it used to be that if you had a, a pearl of wisdom, people yeah, had to I can take live with that. It. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to put an argument to bed. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like. Uh, I like. You know. I, I don't really want the fact. <laughs> I can live with an, I can live with mystery. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. The enigmatic world is my friend. Yes, <laughs> you know. It's the, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, That's where poetry lives. That's where poetry lives. You know, yeah. poetry is that uh, kind of. Uh, uh, you know, it's not there to answer questions. When I was at school, poetry. I'm not saying it wasn't encouraged. It just wasn't. Um, as mainstream until probably um, Rick Mayle, the People's Poet, came <laughs> into fruition. Uh, what, think- what a tragedy! What a tragedy! You know, I mean, I didn't write my poetry as a result of any kind of modern. Mm. You know, the poetry I learned at school was all written in the nineteenth century. You exactly. know, Tennyson and people like that. So I just caught caught their style and wrote about the modern world. And that, to me, was what modern poetry was. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it wasn't Byron and Keats, was it? No, well, you know, it was just the same style, different sort of subject matter or whatever. I know now, because of how you've influenced people, you can go to a poetry night any night of the week, and they are quite rock and roll poems and and stories and laments that people yeah. love because you created a, a different style, a different way of doing it. Well, thanks very much. I can't help feeling partly responsible for yeah. this phenomenon. <laughs> 100%, 100%. Um, I think <laughs> every poet you ever speak to, I think they all tip the cap to you. Thank if, you. Uh, I've got to ask this question. This is one that I've been asked to ask you. Uh, so what's the secret to looking so well and, and slim? <laughs> <laughs> you better ask somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do. You do look really good. Very nice of you. Thank you. Uh, is it an abstination diet or is it stress? <laughs> well, well, you know what? That, that one, what? One of the big things is I, uh, <laughs> I've kept my hair. Yes. You know, it's ironic, isn't it? I've, I've, I've always seen my hair as problematic. You know, mm. I mean, nobody ever has the hair that they like, do they? You know what I mean? Everybody yeah. hates their hair. <laughs> but at least, but at least, I've got hair to hate. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember that one next time somebody has a go about my dodgy Barney. <laughs> In your poetry, um, you've named quite a lot of poems after places and things like yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. Neighbourhood <laughs> poems, yeah. geographical mm. subject matter. is uh, It's a great thing because once you've got the location, even if it's one that you've made up, yeah. then you have to populate that location. And uh, and it just becomes a, a whole uh, unraveling experience, you know, a cerebral experience yeah. that, you know, usually result results in uh, in an interesting uh, set of lyrics. It's not nothing new. That's not peculiar to me. In fact, I, I'll tell you how I got Beasley Street. I wrote it the the, the last line first, <laughs> and then worked my way back. There's a song in, uh, well, there's a movie called 42nd Street, 1935, starring Ruby Keeler and Dick Powell. Busby Berkeley movie, famous for his aerial dance routines and what have you. You know that guy. And uh, and the last uh, and the big production number, which features at the end, is uh, 42nd Street, which takes you through various tableaus of yeah. the ups and downs of, of this New York uh, thoroughfare. 
and it ends on the line, uh, naughty, gaudy, sporty, shorty, 40 second street, like that, you know, so I thought, wow, that's a good big, that's a big ending, you yeah. know what I mean? Uh, so then I thought, what kind of street would you get in there in Salford, you know, it'd be like cheesy and greasy and sleazy. So I thought, what nearly rhymes with those adjectives and I thought Beasley you know it's a well known surname it could happen there's a street called Beasley Street although I've never seen it I'm, I'm pretty sure that somebody can come up with a Beasley Street so anyway so I, I picked that as the uh, so, so I thought what rhymes with that and it's cheesy greasy uneasy cheesy greasy queasy you know and I, I thought great ending so I, I mimicked the ending and then worked <laughs> my way back yeah. Just in order to accommodate that ending. And it's led to the, probably uh, the most, uh, or the second most popular poem in my entire repertoire, Beasley Street. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just fascinated that there isn't one that mentions Stoke. I'm a bit gutted about that now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you couldn't pay me enough. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know this. Actually, Stoke on Trent does exist in rhyme. Yeah. Well, Stoke on. There was a poet here called the Trent Vale Poets, and obviously there's six towns that made up Stoke. And uh, I just want to read you Fenton, which is one of the six towns. It says, I were born in Fenton, and there I'll get me pension. I'll not stray, I'll always stay, because I were born in Fenton. I went to school in Fenton, I had the cane, I got detention. I'll not leave, I'll live, I'll breathe the giddy air of Fenton. I were wed in Fenton, to a girl from Fenton. We had a kid, named him Sid, the bastard moved to Longton. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got poets like that in Stoke on Trent, you don't need any help from me. <laughs> well, thank you very much for doing this. I look forward to seeing you at the Victoria Hall. Have a great weekend. Lovely. Bye bye. All the best, kid. Bye.